In this module, we will understand the basic structure of a C-sharp program, what is a namespace, purpose of a main method. With that, let's jump straight into a demo. Now create a new project, go to File, New, Project. And remember, with .NET, we can use a variety of different programming languages like c -sharp, and there are other programming languages as well, Visual Basic, C++, f -sharp. Now we will choose our programming language as c -sharp. And with .NET, you can create different types of applications. You can create web applications, Windows applications, Office applications, SharePoint, WCF, etc. But we will be creating a console application. So the type of application is console application and the programming language is Visual C Sharp. We will name our project as Introduction to C Sharp. And we are going to create that project in C Drive. Click OK. So this creates a C Sharp console project for us. Now, we will be talking about Solution Explorer, Properties Window, Toolbox, etc. in a later session. So let's close them for now. And I want to make this program as simple as possible. So let's leave only the basic required, you know, lines of code within this program and get rid of the others. So let me get rid of this unwanted namespace declarations. I also don't require this line. This one, and I don't even require these parameters to the main method. All right. So if you look at this particular program, it's a very simple program. Hardly three lines of code with a couple of braces around it. Okay. Now, what do we want this program to do? I want this program to print a very simple message onto a console screen. Now, if you're wondering what is a console screen, it's nothing but the command prompt window. And to get to the command prompt window, Start run and type CMD or COMMAND. Okay, anything would get you to the command prompt. So, this is the command prompt window. Okay, so on a window like this, I want a message Welcome to C Sharp Training, and I want your C Sharp program to do that. And to do that, it's very simple. Okay, I don't have to write any new methods or something like that. I can make use of the classes that are present inside the .NET Framework. Now, if you're new to what is .NET Framework, then please check, you know, my video tutorial on .NET Framework Basics. Okay, so within .NET Framework, we have a class called Console Class. Okay, we can use this Console Class basically to write messages onto this console window, which I have just shown you or read messages from the console window if a user has typed something into that. Okay, so now my program has to write something onto the console. So I'm going to use a function called write line. Okay, so I'm using this write line function and to that I will pass a message that I want to be printed onto the console. For example, I want this message welcome to C sharp training. To be printed onto the message. And now to run this program, all I have to do is press Ctrl F5. And once you do that, you have that message on the screen. Welcome to C Sharp Training. Press any key to continue. When I do that, the program terminates. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So if I have to print a message, all you have to do is use this right line method, pass it the message that you want to print it, and this function is present inside this class. Now, if you look at this program, there are a couple of pieces involved in this. Okay, the first line right here is called the namespace declaration. Okay, so what do we mean by namespace declaration? Basically, this line tells that to the rest of the program, we are going to make use of code that is present inside this system namespace. Okay, so what is a namespace? I mean, at the moment, understand that a namespace is a collection of classes, for example, okay? Because this console class, if you look at the fully qualified name of that, this console class full name is actually system.console. So the console class is present inside the system namespace. So if I hover over that, it says namespace system. So this console class is present inside this namespace. Now, if I don't have this declaration there, what's going to happen? Look at this. We get an error. 
Okay, so what is that? The name console does not exist in the current context. Okay, so this red squiggly line indicates it's an error. So if I try to build this application, if I go to the build menu and say build solution, I get a compiler error. The name console does not exist in the current context. That's because the program does not know where is this console class coming from. So to let our program know that we are going to make use of classes that are present inside the system namespace, we use that declaration called using system, like so. So this will tell to our program, you know, we are going to make use of that class, console class, which is present inside this namespace. Now, if you ask me, is a namespace just a collection of classes? No, it's a collection of variety of things. For example, let me take you to the slide. So in this slide, you can see that a namespace is basically used to organize your code, and it's a collection of classes, interfaces, structures, enums, and delegates. Now, what are these? Okay, so we will be talking about classes, interfaces, structures, enums, and delegates in a very great detail in a you know, later video sessions. So until then, don't worry. So, but just understand that a namespace is basically used to organize your code, and it's a collection of all these. Okay, so that's that. Now, just to show you, it's in fact is a collection of all that system dot. Look at this. For example, action. That's a delegate, so a namespace can contain delegates. And if you look at this one, activator, that's a class. And similarly, there are various other things like events, etc. And if you look at this, interestingly, this one is actually a namespace. So a namespace can contain other namespaces as well. So what is a namespace? A namespace is used to organize your code, and it's a collection of classes, delegates, namespaces, etc. Okay, now is it mandatory for me for me to use a declaration like this? No, not really. You can get rid of that if you want, but if you do that, you have to use the fully qualified name like so. So you can either use the fully qualified name like that, or you can use the namespace declaration. It's up to you, whichever is convenient. But usually, in general, people use namespace declaration on the top because if a new program if you are referring to console class multiple times, you don't have to use the system keyword you know, every time you use the console class if you have a namespace declaration here. So that makes it more easy, less typing basically. Okay? Alright, so that's about namespace declaration. Another important thing to understand here. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Let's have you know, a namespace declaration, so using system, and then the next piece of thing that you have to understand is this class, class program, okay? So any piece of code that you write should actually be inside a class, and when we talk about classes, there are static classes and instance classes, which we'll be talking about in a very great detail in our later session. So until then, don't worry. We just require a class. Any piece of code that we write should be residing inside a class. So this function should have a place to live, and that is going to be this function, this class called program, okay? And this method, this is the function. Functions and methods are the one which will actually do the work. We will be talking about functions in a very great detail again in a later session. A function will have something called access modifiers, static modifiers, return types, function names, and parameters. So we'll be talking about all these in a later session. But if you look at right here, this function name is called as main function. So basically this function tells, okay, the program execution, when I actually run the program, the execution should start right there and end right there. So if I run this program, what's going to happen, it enters, you know, it starts executing here, prints this line, and terminates here. Okay. Now let's say, let me make a copy of this. Say, for example, I have, you know, maybe I'll call that main one. And just for differentiation, we call this as training one. Now, if I execute this program, do you think, will this message be printed? 
or this message will be printed or both of them will be printed what do you think will happen you know from this slide if you understand main method is the entry point to your application so where is the main method this one is the main method this is not the main method because it says main one so it treats that method as something else so this is the entry point so your program execution starts here and here which means it only will print this line it doesn't print this line okay so if your class you know you have this class called program if this class has got hundreds of methods inside that you now which where should your console application starts started at execution that's what is determined by your main method so your main method is basically the entry point into your application okay now so let's go ahead and run this the moment i run that look at this it says welcome to c sharp training which is this one but it doesn't print the line but what if i want even that line to be printed and the way to do it is just before you know we know that the program will be terminated here just before that call your main one function as well so what happens when we run the program the execution starts here it prints this line and then it says sees this method call this function called all right let's wait i need to call this function as well so it goes here it executes this function finishes the call come back into this line and terminates the program so now if i go ahead and run this program it's going to print both of these messages on the console so it's as simple as that but one thing to keep in mind is that every console application should have a main method which basically tells that's the entry point that's where the program should start executing.